Alright, so we are now ready to export out a displacement and a normal map uh, from ZBrush for use in UDK. Uh, so coming down to displacement and normal map, um, I've switched on the adaptive scan mode. Um, this, uh, well if you want a description of it, you just hold the control key. Basically what it does is it decides which areas it needs more detail in and um, it adds more detail to those areas. Areas that it doesn't need detail in such as this sort of just sort of flat space here or especially along here along these edges here um, because there's very little displacement there it's, uh, it's not going to worry about those quite as much as these ridges here. Um, I'll I'll leave the um, displacement map image resolution set to 1024 and um, coming down to normal map uh, we'll make sure that we click on tangent uh, coordinates and we'll also switch adaptive on here. The reason for that is that the tangent space normal map is is the format that we will be using in UDK. Uh, I've left smooth UV off on both displacement and normal map uh, because, um, well, I, I prefer to leave it off so that we don't move any UV points around. Other people will tell you that um, smooth UV is something to switch on. Um, usually, if you're if you're working in um, in Maya, uh, but uh, give it a go with with um, with any of these options switched on or off uh, depending on which is the best way uh, that you find to uh, export a displacement map. Now in order to generate the displacement map we have to set our subdivision level down to its lowest level or to whatever level we are going to be um, uh, we are going to be displacing from. So this is the uh, level that we're going to have in um, uh, UDK and so we'll be uh, setting that to subdivision level 1. And with that enabled, um, you'll notice that even at this lowest subdivision level, there is still changes made to our geometry. The way to uh, generate it for geometry, which is exactly the same as when it came from Maya, you'll remember that we um, uh, stored a morph target right at the beginning. Uh, well, if you wanted to apply uh, displacement and normal maps to identical meshes as you imported in the first instance, you can switch to your morph target now and you'll see that that is now perfectly even. It's exactly the same as the mesh that we exported from Maya. So with that done, uh, we can come down to uh, create displacement map. It will take a, a short while to generate. You can see up here. I'll just pause while it's generating that displacement map. Alright, so it's finished uh, generating the displacement map. Uh, the place to find this is under alpha and looking down to the bottom here we can find uh, the displacement map um, with the file name of the tool that we've saved. You'll notice that um, if you look at the map the eyes and the um, the corn is at the top of the map uh, so just remember that this uh, displacement map does need to be flipped. And so we can flip, um, well we'll select that first and then we'll flip it. And so there we go, that's the appropriate orientation. So with that um, done, we can export this out and I'm just going to choose that file and rename this to the ISP. And then we will come down and we will create the normal map. This is a similar process and it takes a similar amount of time so I'm just going to pause the video and uh, let it uh, calculate the normal map. Okay so it has uh, completed the normal map and uh, this is what it looks like if it was applied as a texture it does this automatically. 
Um, so uh, you'll notice that the uh, again the um, the normal map is generated uh, flipped upside down from what we need. So this time we go up to texture and we flip vertically and then we export that out using the same naming convention that we did before. You'll notice that I am saving as um, uh, PSD or Photoshop files. Uh, that's because I'll be taking these into Photoshop anyway. If we needed to, we could save these directly to a uh, tagged image format or a TIFF file uh, if you prefer that or if you prefer a bitmap for importing directly into um, uh, UDK. But uh, I'm saving it as a PSD just because we'll be um, taking that extra step. Now, um, okay, we have um, switched to the morph target. Um, to um, generate these normal maps, uh, but um, when we have uh, done all of our sculpting, uh, the actual lowest resolution without the morph target applied would be a better um, morph target. Um, uh, would be a better mesh to uh, to apply these normal maps to anyway to get a cleaner result. And so, if you wanted to do this. Um, you simply um, create the displacement map and normal map without the morph target applied and then we can export uh, our mesh as an OBJ in order to um, apply this, uh, this normal map to a mesh which is probably better um, suited to it. Um, of course you won't have this option if you're working in a pipeline or at a production house where you have to use the model that is currently being rigged perhaps for animation um, and so it it uh, it can be um, a luxury that you don't have but it's just something to remember uh, now the um, the final thing that um, I'm going to show you is that um, if the geometry that you've sculpted is very complex, it might be a better idea to cut your losses um, on the normal map and simply go to a higher resolution base mesh and, in, and import this into UDK. Now this is subdivision level 3, which means that we have roughly 1000 polygons. Now 1000 polygons isn't too bad a um, isn't too heavy a uh, polygon count for a static mesh so I don't really mind having it at this level so with the mesh at this level I'm just going to export out another copy of this and I'm going to make this um, underscore 1k poly and uh, with this um, as our current uh, level of subdivision, I'm just going to create this displacement map and normal map again. So I'll do that and I'll pause the video. Okay, so I've generated those um, uh, the displacement map and normal map for this level of um, uh, of detail. And uh, so next we'll go into Photoshop and we'll prepare these textures for UDK and uh, then we will um, go into Maya and prepare this new mesh for UDK and then we will go to UDK and we will uh, put it all together and hopefully come up with something which looks pretty good.